Hello and welcome back. You are tuned into Arise Works, and this is the episode five of the workshop on getting started with rendering and shading in Metro. In this episode, I will show you how to get started with displacement. And yet, the very fact that displacement moves around geometry and can create interesting effects, it also counts with some limitations and problems. And we are going to find ways how to solve them. Let's talk about displacement. Now, what displacement does, it, it actually creates new geometry and starts moving it around. So in this scene, all I have is the grid object that is just for background. Our geometry, which in my case is currently just a grid, and an environment light, which is literally just white color with intensity 0.72. So, Let's go and create some displaced geometry, shall we? Uh, we start with principal shader, I drop it here. Then we go to rest position because I will displace using noise in this case as well. Uh, then I go to whirly noise because I really want, uh, by the way, I really want to have it look like a man made material. So essentially, when you change the metric from a um, Euclidean to Manhattan or Chebyshev, it starts looking like something off a construct, right? It starts looking like something a person could make, a human could make. So finally, we drop the displace node, which will displace our stuff. So I connect rest position to position as per usual, then I dial the frequency up to 11, you know. Uh, then I connect the distance to the value. And then I connect this distance to this displacement value. And if you think that we're done, don't forget, we have to connect this display, uh, principal shader to our object. Don't forget that. And finally, we go to render view. Whoops. <laughs> to render from the previous, my testing. Okay, if we go to render view, nothing is happening. Well, why is nothing is happening? Let me just reframe this render. Because in the principal shader, I'll go to our material context. In the principal shader, we have to go to displacement and enable custom inputs. Okay, finally, something starts to happen. We obviously can see the displacement. Now, for me personally, I would say let's go to effect scale 0 0.1 and the offset should be usually half of the effect scale. Now, what does offset do is let's say you have a texture, for example, you have a triplanar projection uh, for your displacement and you really want to, at, for example, your displacement that equals zero when you are painting it in Substance Paint or Mari is actually 0 0.5. Anything that's lower than that will push your geometry inside. Anything that is more than 0 0.5 will push it outside. So this is why the offset is used. In our case, we actually don't need offset at all. So we can just uh, say zero. As you will see in a second, our geometry will ever so slightly go upwards because we will not have the negative offset. So as you can see, yeah it's slightly moved upwards. Okay, so far, so good. No problems, everything works, sounds good. So, now I'll go to um, and move around our mountain. Uh, I'm sorry, I will just apply a mountain to our geometry so it looks kind of like this. And then I give it new normals because we are displacing along normals, remember? I think I'll have to reframe it like this. Let's see what we've got. And something definitely is happening. Maybe it's kind of wrong, but we will, we will see what exactly is wrong is happening. Because in this situation, it's not easy to understand what, what is wrong with our geometry. So, of course, I found the most problematic way uh, to, 
let's see, uh, to showcase the problems that are happening with our geometry. So I start with the platonic, that's uh, just tetrahedron. Then I poly extrude everything with the individual individual elements. So if you extrude with a connected, it just becomes bigger. If you extrude, uh, extrude individually, as you can see, we are, yeah, it's, it does what it says, individually extrude stuff. And now we are giving it new normals and I'm gonna rotate it a bit just to see better what is happening with our geometry. So now I press render and let's see what we got. I'll actually delete this stuff for now. Okay, so we started computing and as you can see, yeah, the problems start showing up. As you can see, we show uh, we have the inverted faces, we have the broken geometry, and uh, something is shaded black. Basically, it's all wrong. And usually, and even um, the the documentation says that if you have this sort of a problem, you should start increasing the shading quality, uh, decreasing the dicing flatness, and ray predicing, enable full predicing. So let's do just that. We have like two, this one maybe 0 0.1, uh, and then I press the snap button just to compare the results. We have the full predicing. Okay, sounds good. Let's press render and see what we got. It takes a couple of seconds to compute. All right. So there is a bit of a difference, as you can see. Here it's shaded a bit, a bit more reliable. Here it's kind of a bit more reliable as well, but overall it's still broken, right? And there is another situation just like that that I want to show uh, show you and how to fix it. So what we have is a letter H, which kind of stands for Houdini. Then I extruded it. Let's say output back as well. Then I fused it just to be sure, right? And then I pressed the normal. I gave it new normals and let's press render. And as you might have already predicted, it will be problematic, it will be broken. And yep, there it goes. So there is another way of fixing that. What I'm gonna do now is decrease the shading quality, get the dicing flatness back to 0 0.05, disable pre-dicing, and to make the mantra displace it without problems, you have to have continuous geometry. And continuous geometry, in our case, it will be geometry that has been subdivided. Now, if I subdivide it, whoops, if I subdivide it right now, you can see that this is, this is wrong. This is, this is weird, right? This is not exactly what we have. So pre, pre, before we subdivide, I'll go and create a poly bevel. And let me just showcase what was going to happen. I'll go to make it round, the divisions of one, and the distance is super tiny distance of zero, zero, one. Okay. Actually, now we have to give it new normals because this looks just kind of wrong. And if I subdivide this new geometry, with these new edges, as you can see, everything is still broken. <laughs> to fix that, we just go to open, open subdiv loop. And finally, we go give it new normals again. Let me see. Something, something is weird. Not exactly sure what's happening. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe. Okay, yeah. Um, open subdiv loop works for this case scenario pretty well. I increased the polybevel amount from 1 to 2 to make it, uh, the edges a bit sharper. So as you can see, we have our geometry that is sharp and looking good. And if I press render now, you will see that subdivided geometry is being treated as if it were 
continuous geometry and we will not have the broken polygons even without pre-dicing. As you can see, we fixed our problem. All right, so this is this is how you kind of go and fix your stuff uh, using the subdivision. Now you might be thinking, well, this is not very ex extremely good example. Why would I even subdivide my stuff? So, for example, if I have a sphere which is just polygon with a frequency of two and uniform scale zero point two, and I then mount in it, so it kind of looks like a stone, like a boulder, right? And um, if I render this now you will see that without subdivisions, it will have problems. For example, let's just pretend it looks like a stone because you would actually make stone using the triplanar displacement projections of things from like substance source or maybe uh, mega scans. Okay, um, this doesn't look like a stone a lot, but let's just, okay, for the sake of this video, um, as you can see, this is a problem. This looks like a problem. So if we subdivide now, and by the way, I'll just, I forgot to press the snap. I'll now press the snap just to see the difference between subdivided and non-subdivided geometry. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, these problematic parts here and this inverted shading here, it's actually maybe even a hole in the geometry, which is a disaster. It has been fixed with the mounting. Uh, I'm sorry, with the subdivide. Again, this is without subdivision. This is with subdivision. Everything looks fixed and everything is working. So there you go. Uh, play with subdivision. Again, to, to set up subdivision, you have to if you are doing it with noise, of course. Uh, naturally, you can use any other noise that you want. Let me see. Let's say uh, turbulent noise. Again, we'll use the alligator noise. Something like this. So we get the rest position in, oh, in the position. We get the noise into the value. And we connect the distance into the displacement. And we don't forget to enable input displacement. Let's see how it works with turbulent noise. Okay. This is perfect. <laughs> right. So. There you go. If you have problems, uh, maybe start with dicing because sometimes you don't need, you don't have to subdivide your geometry. Maybe dicing, increasing the shading quality, fix it. But if you do have problems with your geometry, subdivide. If your subdivision breaks your geometry, polybevel with extremely low values before. So there you go. That's all you need to get started with displacement and see you in the next video thanks for watching hopefully you found this video useful and if you did don't hesitate to press the like button also we have a lot more coming up so if you don't want to miss other videos don't forget to click the subscribe button if you want to share ideas and thoughts don't forget to leave a comment below i'll try to read everything and respond if needed have a nice day